and it really makes you want to go to Italy and just eat and eat and eat and eat and try to find some bad food, but I don't think you can in Italy. Hello and welcome back to the Sanders Review. My name is Caleb Sanders and today we're going to be doing another quick spoiler-free review. I got over being sick this last weekend and so I got a little behind so I wanted to do a couple of quick videos this week just to kind of get caught up before jumping into another more in-depth spoiler review next week. If you watched my introduction video, you know that I like to read a variety of books from fantasy to sci-fi to historic fiction to more thick historical anthologies. Today I wanted to highlight a book that I read several years ago. I just reread it just for the purpose of this review, and I enjoyed it just as much the second time as I did the first, and that is John Grisham's book, Playing for Pizza. If you know John Grisham, you know that he's known a lot for his legal thrillers, for, along with a few other books about different sports and activities and arts and books and things like that. But playing for pizza, in my mind, is probably one of his best that is outside of his legal thriller work. If I had to categorize playing for pizza, I would call it a light sports comfort food travel novel. And if that is not vague enough to pique your interest, then I hope you'll stay and listen to some of the elements that I love from this book. The story for playing for pizza is a very simple, straightforward story following an itinerant quarterback in the NFL, which I think is app that we're doing this since we have the Super Bowl coming up in a couple weeks. This book follows an itinerant quarterback named Rick Dockery, who he is traveling through the NFL. He's played on eight different teams in like six years. He's a third stringer. And the book starts with him waking up in a hospital room with a concussion. And knowing that he probably did something messed up in a game somewhere and very quickly realizes that not only did he mess up a game, he lost his team the chance of going to the Super Bowl because of three interceptions in a very short period of time, like 10 minutes of game time. If you know football, you're not playing again if that happened to you. Rick wakes up to death threats and doctors and nurses who basically almost don't want to help him because of how they view him and his failure on the field to their team. He was playing for the Cleveland Browns. And he very quickly realizes from his agent and from the team that he's been released from the team he can't even go home to show his face at his parents, at his childhood home, because of how bad he did. Nobody from the team reaches out to him, not a single player, not a single coach, not a single fan. All of the cheerleaders who he you know, got involved in, the cheerleader, football player, uh, relationship life, um, nobody reaches out. Nobody supports him. His agent is very hands-off, basically saying, yeah, you're, you're basically done. And he's at the bottom of his barrel. Within a few days, he gets a call that an Italian-American football, this isn't soccer football, this is American football, an Italian-American football team in Parma, Italy, is interested in him. And he very obviously is confused about this. And the rest of the book, thats it's not really spoilers because that all takes place in like the first 10 pages. The rest of the book is an exploration of not just Italian American football, but this American who's uncultured experiencing Italian life and food and art and cuisine and everything to have there. Speaking of cuisine, I mean, I couldn't talk about Italy without having a little bit of prosciutto and gouda and cracker, you know. As this book plays out, it is very comedic in nature. I could very much visualize if this book was made into a movie or a miniseries. It would be very comedy heavy. I could see that being very successful with some of the comedic beats with as Rick Dockery arrives in Italy, this smaller Italian city of Parma in northern Italy with the small streets. And he's this tall football player with these little tiny cars, never driven stick shift before or hasn't in years. And everything this has to offer, it's very much a comedic note that is very expressive. John Grisham wrote this book after visiting Italy with his wife for some research in one of his legal books. And he discovered that they had a pretty thriving American football league, league with like 10 professional teams that played throughout Italy. And I did some research and this is a thing. He didn't base any of this story off of real players or real, uh, real events, but very much set in the real world of Italy with Italian American football. A bunch of the players come from very diverse backgrounds. None of them are getting paid. You have a judge. You have a restaurant owner, you have a farmer, you have a professor at the university, all of them playing 
this Italian, this American football game because of their love for just hitting each other. This book very much is a love letter to Italian cuisine. As you experience this guy learning about and exploring this Italian cuisine for the first time. And it really makes you want to go to Italy and just eat and eat and eat and eat. And try to find some bad food. I don't think you can in Italy. This character continues on as he's learning how to play with this new team in this area where he, he has so much expectations put on him because he is a real NFL player. As bad as he was, he's an NFL player and going to be slated to be one of the best on the team and in the country. And he goes to the opera. He experiences art and architecture. He has a failed Italian romance followed very quickly by a, another romance that is very successful. And it seems a lot more apropos for his character. And I won't go into it, but it's it's very much an enjoyable process and a very realistic uh, process of character and relational growth for this character. He gets followed to Italy by this seedy sports reporter who just can't uh, can't leave his story alone, and that has a play throughout the book. Did I mention food? As this book progresses, you very much experience through this character friendship, brotherhood, relationships, all the things that he was missing in his entire time in the NFL he's experiencing in this Italian small city with this very small, underfunded Italian football team. Ultimately, this book really does feel like a love letter of exploring Italy and what Italy has to offer. I love that. My wife and I really want to go to Italy one day. We were slated to go to Italy right in 2020. Uh, we were debating whether we could go or not because we were pregnant with our first child at the time. And then COVID hit and no chance whatsoever. And that will probably be a few years until we actually do. And this book just makes me want to go to Italy for food for culture, for art, for the language, just everything that this book highlights in its very short length. You can read, I believe the, the physical book is about 250 pages to 300 pages. It's a fast read. You can get through it easily in a weekend. And it is a very enjoyable read. It's nothing complex, nothing overly dark. It is just a very simple, straightforward story of somebody discovering a love for a country and for an experience. I would personally rate this book around a 3 to a 3.5 just because it is not the most complex. It's very predictable in how the story is going to play out, but that doesn't take away at all from experiencing and discovering Italy through this character's eyes. What about you? Do you have any sports books or any other type of travel discovery book that is enjoyable to read? I would love to hear about them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single view and comment, especially as I'm just kind of exploring, just having fun with this. Whether I'm having five views or 100 views, I very much thank you. So please like, comment, subscribe. Click up here for my very first video where you hear more about me. Click right here for my last spoiler-free review on The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So come back next week for a more in-depth, spoiler-filled review, a book to be decided but I'm looking forward to getting to a more in-depth video um, after this week. So take care, have a great week, bye-bye.